Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is a continuation of a series on solving systems with Gauss-Jordan elimination or with Gaussian elimination, but I use Gauss-Jordan elimination, and we use augmented matrices. You should have watched both videos prior to this in this series, one being the solution algorithm for Gaussian and Gauss-Jordan elimination. And then I just finished a video on solving three by three systems using Gauss-Jordan elimination. This is just a continuation of that. We're now gonna hop into this four by four system and the process is identical. It's just, I wanted to have a larger system. So again, we place everything into an augmented matrix. Make sure before you do that, all your variables line up in their associated columns and that the right-hand side is just only constants. That's how you start this. Now we're gonna place that information into an augmented matrix. Just to let you know, if you were to try to solve this system by hand without using an augmented matrix, there's a lot of decision-making skills. So um, this is where uh, solving a system use with uh, an augmented matrix starts to pay off because once you get to these larger systems of equations, there's too many decisions to be made and it's nice to have an algorithm. All right, let's build this augmented matrix. And I was gonna write it down fully at first uh, and pause the video while I was doing it, but then I thought, you know what? There are a couple things I wanna talk about here. There's no X's right here, so that's why I have a zero right there. And same thing, I have zero, uh, oops, I have zero Y's right here. So when I write the second column, it'll be a one, three, one and a zero and so on and so forth down the line. So that's where I'm getting my zeros. All right, we get to there. One thing I want to note is again, that this is the X column. That's the column for the Y's. It's the column for the Z's. And then unfortunately that's out of alphabetical order. So, but that's how life works sometimes. You do not want to swap columns. Now in our method for solving systems using an augmented matrix, you can, you're allowed to swap rows, but do not swap columns. That's bad news. So only swap rows. We only have three rules to the game. Swap rows, multiply a row by any number you want other than zero, and you can add multiples of a row to another row. Those are the three rules. If, if you can't do it with three rules, uh, there's an issue, right? So, all right, the first uh, goal is to, one, focus on this main diagonal, but also, to get this first element in the main diagonal to be a one if you can. And guess what? It already is a one. So now I'm going to use that main diagonal to make zeros out of everything below, basically the kill step. So I'll write that in here, kill step. And we'll go ahead, oops, not stir, but step. And we'll go ahead and write out what we're gonna do. Now, obviously the second row already has a zero below that one, so I don't have to worry about that. But rows three and four, I'm gonna worry about. So we're gonna take the opposite of row one, add it to row three, that'll become our new row three. We're also gonna take three times row one, add it to row four, and that'll become our new row four. So I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. And I went ahead and pasted in the uh, matrix without rows three and four because those are the ones being modified. All right, taking the opposite of row one, adding it to row three. So I'm just gonna highlight this so you can see where I'm looking. Take the opposite of that top row and add it to the third row to become the new third row. Negative one plus one will give me a zero. Negative one plus one will give me a zero. Negative two plus zero will give me a negative two. Uh, negative negative one or one plus three will give me a four 
and negative negative two, which is two plus two will give me a four. Great. Now I move on to, uh, let's see, rows one and four, but this time it'll be three times row one. And we're gonna add that to row four. So I'm gonna to say three times, just to remind myself. Three times row one and add that to row four to become the new row four. That'll be three plus a negative three, which is zero. Three plus zero, which is three. Six plus one, which is seven. Negative three plus two, which is a negative one. And negative six plus five, which is a negative one. So this is a good way to kind of approach it. Notice that in a single step, we now have the first column in the form that we want. Our ultimate goal, remember, is to arrive at a matrix where you have a main diagonal of all ones, one, 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 zeros everywhere else, and then some numbers on the right-hand side. So we're well on our way to that form. Let me erase that because it's just gonna get in our way, but that's the mindset of where we're going. All right, so now I look through this uh, system or this augmented matrix and I say, okay, now that I'm done with this first diagonal and the first column, I'll go to the next diagonal. Now, I'd like that to be a one if I can get it to be that without getting fractions. Well, if I divide that row by a three, I'll get fractions. So that's not gonna happen there. I could technically swap rows two and four to get this row, I guess, all the way up there. However, when you do that, you'll still have the same issue. If you divide by three, you'll get fractions in that row. So I'm not gonna bother with that either. I'll just keep this three as a three. That's just the best I can do. And then I'll use that to kill everything below. Well, that's already a zero, so I don't need to worry about that. Really, I only need to kill off that guy right there. So let's do it. I'm gonna write, uh, let's see, a negative, row two, add that to row four, that will become my new row four. Again, if you have an instructor that tells you that you have to make your main diagonal one as you move forward, uh, that is actually not true. You only want to make it a one if it doesn't create fractions. In this case, making that three into a one by dividing row two by a three would create a bunch of fractions. I just don't want to deal with that. So let's go ahead and do this problem. Again, I'll highlight the rows that I'm working with so that you could see. I'm, I'm working with rows two and four and we're multiplying row two by a negative one. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I guess, hold on. There we go. I just wanted to glue that, uh, paste that matrix in there. Negative one times row two and add it to row four. So that'd be a negative zero plus zero is zero. By design, that will always work out. Negative three plus three is zero. By design, that should always work out. Negative one plus seven is a six. Negative two plus a negative one is a negative three. And a negative two minus one is a negative three as well. Not too bad. All right, let's see what else we have going on. So we have now, uh, let's see, successfully turned that into a one and killed everything below. We could not really turn that into one, but at least we killed everything below. Now we're to this guy right here. You can turn that into a one actually. So let's go ahead and just multiply that row by a negative one half. It's such a good idea just to simplify the numbers that you're working with. So I'm gonna paste that in here and there are faster or not faster. There are other ways to do this like if I was working uh, on a homework and I didn't really have to worry about somebody seeing my work, I would probably just erase these values or maybe cross them out and just put in, oh, that's one and divide that by negative one that's an, or negative two and that's negative two. Divide that by negative two and that's a negative two. I would probably do something like that just to speed things along so I don't have to rewrite things. But in this case, since I'm showing you, I'll just go ahead and be complete with it. Negative one half times this row three. Well, I get negative one half times zero, zero times another zero, zero. Negative one half times a negative two is a one. Negative one half of four is a negative two and one negative one half of four is a negative two. All right. 
So now I'm going to use that one to kill off that six down below. We'll do this by saying negative six times row three, add that to row four becomes the new row four. And I'll paste in the matrix here. And uh, we are just changing, we're not changing anything other than row four. So I'll just go ahead and erase those elements in row four. Negative six times row three, six times row three, add it to row four. That'd be zero plus zero, zero plus zero, negative six plus six is zero. And negative six times negative two is positive 12 minus three is a nine. Uh, positive 12 minus three is a nine. There we go. Finally, in this augmented matrix we have here, and I say finally, it's actually not finally, but it's close to finally. Uh, we're gonna divide that fourth row by a one ninth or by a nine. So we'll multiply by one ninth or divide that row by uh, a nine. So either or, it's the same thing. One ninth times row four becomes the new row four. Again, I'm doing that because I would prefer that my main diagonal has all ones. Uh, I couldn't get that second main element to be a one because it would cause fractions, but everything else I can deal with. So I'm going to take this row and multiply it by a one ninth. And when you do that, you get, let's see if I can paste this in quickly. And you can see what you get. Actually, it's fairly easy to see. This becomes a one and a one. And now you're ready for the next half. Now you may think, wow, oh, geez, this is taking forever. But in reality, this is a four by four system. It's not taking long at all. For a four by four system, that's pretty good. And this graduates up as time goes on. You get a five by five, six by six, seven by seven, 10 by 10, whatever it is. You can still use the same technique. In the future, if you go into mathematics or applied mathematics, you'll learn other techniques that speed up this process. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and take this one and start the working our way upwards, basically killing everything off above. We'll take that and do, uh, I'll write the instructions here twice, row four. We're gonna add that to row three to become the new row three. We're gonna take, uh, let's see, negative twice row four add that to row two to become the new row two. And then we'll take just row four and add it to row one to become the new row one. All right, we've run out of room on this page. So let me go up to the top of the page and I'll paste in the matrix that we we're just working with. So I'll paste that right here and uh, highlight and write basically. And I'll paste it in twice uh, because I know that I'll need the shell of it right here. But we're changing pretty much everything in this matrix matrix except for the fourth row. So I'm just going to erase everything except for the fourth row. That's the only one that remains untouched. All right, let's see. I'm going to take this fourth row and I'm going to take twice it and add it to row three. So two times zero plus zero, well, that remains zero. Two times zero plus zero, that remains zero. Two times zero plus one, that remains one. Two times one is two plus a negative two is zero. Two times one is two plus a negative two, that's zero. That's kind of nice. Now I move on to my next operation, which is taking row four and row two. Let's see, we're going to take negative two times row four and add it to row two. So let's go ahead and do that. Zero plus zero, zero plus three, uh, zero plus one, negative two plus two, uh, negative two plus uh, two, be a zero. And we're done with that. Now we're gonna do one last move, row four plus row one, a quick, addition. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus two is two. One plus a negative one is zero. One plus a negative two is negative one. All right. So to recap so far, we've turned that into one, killed everything below. Tried to turn that into one, didn't work out, but killed everything below. 
Turn that into one, killed everything below. Turn that into a one, there was nothing to kill below. Now that this is a one, kill everything above. Now we're going to this one and we're gonna kill everything above as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Zoom out. In this case, you e probably can easily see you're gonna take negative row three, add it to row two to become the new row two. And you're gonna take negative twice row three, add it to row one to become the new row one. So that's our moves for this process. I'm just kind of moving things around here. Uh, note that we are going to be changing rows one and two. So I'll just erase those out of here so that I can get a clean start. And let's go ahead and do this taking the opposite of row three and adding it to row two. So the opposite of this row and add it up. Negative zero plus zero, well, obviously. Negative zero plus three, negative one plus one, negative zero plus zero, negative zero plus zero. All right. And let's see, what's the next move? We're gonna take negative twice this third row and add it to row one, so negative twice that row. So negative two times zero plus one is one. Negative two times zero plus one is one. Negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Uh, zero plus zero is zero. And zero plus negative one is negative one. We are getting close to finished. And uh, in this case, I'm just gonna quickly say I'm dividing row two by a one by a three. So uh, this is that case I said earlier, you could just kind of cross that out and call that a one because dividing everything else by three will create zeros everywhere else. So that doesn't really matter, but that's a quick kind of move. And then finally, I'll use that one to kill up above. So I'm going to, in this case, take the opposite of row two and add it to row one to become the new row one and when we do that we'll have our final uh, matrix so let me go ahead I'll actually I'll just do it right now oops and I don't want that in red I want that in black so if you take the opposite of row two and add it to row one opposite of zero plus one is one opposite of one plus one is zero and then zero zero opposite of zero plus a negative one is still a negative one otherwise here is your matrix zero zero one zero zero and zero 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 one one really kind of a fun thing remember the columns stand for x y z and w so one x is equal to a negative one one y is equal to a zero one z is equal to zero and one w is equal to one again 1x is equal to a negative 1, 1y is equal to 0, 1z is equal to 0, and 1w is equal to 1. That is the solution to this 4x4 four four system of equations. Again, if you were to try to do that without using this style or technique, it would take a lot more work, it'd be messier, and uh, you would not have kind of a path of travel. In other words, you would not have uh, have a way to check your work as far as where your mistakes would have occurred here at least we're writing down all of our steps so that we can recheck if we get to an answer that just looks terrible we can recheck each step of the way and say ah did i correctly add a negative row two plus row four here you know that type of thing so it's really nice to keep track of what you're doing and again just like i did in the last video if your solution requires it to be written as an ordered n tuple then you can write it this way there you go all right so in the next video we'll start into what happens if you get infinite solutions how will this uh process change it's the system of equations we must deal with them all at once always looking for solutions positive outlook Getting in our way, cards Effects more than we can sometimes see Things for what they are And work together
together until you feel at peace. Listen close, don't talk too much, that isn't cold. Sure, you may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry. 